It's Tuesday night and KHL action brings us six games tonight. My name is Andreas Sachinko and you're watching the KHL Update. First off, Alms Avangard holds Severstal for a dead last in the Western Conference. While scoring in the first, so we head straight to the second, halfway through the period, Avangard on a power play, Ivan Likomsov feeds Nikolai Lomtigov to the Hershbergs to Maxim Kazakov, and he won times at home for his 17th of the year. What a season this guy is having. one nothing Avangard after 40. Moving on to the third now, and Avangard doubled the lead. Better Kokurkov has his first of the season, and that's his 59 game scoreless streak. 59 regular season games, that's how long Kokurkov couldn't find the back of the net. And now it's 2 0 Avangard. A little later, Avangard scored two more goals to put this one to bat. First, Mikhail Kempton has his fourth of the year from the Hershmarks to make a 3 0 Avangard. And just a few minutes later, Ilya Mikhaev scores his fifth, picks up his second point of the night, and that's gonna do it. Dominic Fuchs subs 15 shots for his sixth shutout of the season, and now I'm gonna take this one 4 0 on all mice. Welcome to Astana Kazakhstan now, where Boris meet Red Army tonight. With just over a minute into the game and home team opens up the score and Roman Savchenko puts the puck on net and it's quick past to fast. Fast does not look strong on the play and Boris takes a 1-0 lead. Just after that Boris get a man advantage and they convert on it. Brandon Pachensky feeds Roman Starchenko and he does his 10th of the season with a neat backhander. Victor Fass is benched after that and Ilya Soraki takes his place in that. Here now and we got a fight. Jan Morsak drops the glass with Gans Tim Pushkarov. And it's a pretty lopsided fight too. Morsak is a definite winner in this one. Late in the period, Vadim Krustoslav Botsev steals the puck from Grigori Panin in the offensive end, knocks it over to Martin St. Pierre and he finishes the job. St. Pierre nets his seventh and it's 3-0 Boris now. A Red Army answer right back, just 27 seconds later, Jan Mursik drops the puck to Dmitry Kurgushev, he beats Sergei Andronov, and Andronov gets a goal back for Red Army. 3-1, but they're gonna get another one very soon. 80 seconds later, Jan Mursik nets his 10th of the season. Pavel Polekta lets an easy one in, and Jan Mursik completes Gordie Howe hat-trick in one period of play. He had a fight, an assist, and now a goal too. It's 3-2 after 40. Early in the third period, Boris get another man advantage. Mike Landin takes a shot, breaks his stick. Roman Starchuk gets the puck on a broken play, shoots, and he's robbed by Elisa Rocket. What a save to keep it a long haul game. Shot after that, though, Mike Landin snipes it home to restore the two goal margin. Nice shot by Landin, who gets his eighth of the year to make it 4 2 Boris. A little later, Dustin Boyd comes really close to making it 5 2 Boris, but the puck hit the crossbar and the goal post and somehow stayed out. Red Army still have a shot tonight. They get within one again with just over two minutes left in regulation. Alexander Radulov sets up Stefan Da Costa and he makes it 4-3. This is too little and too late though. Boris go on to win this one 4-3. Fox toss Teddy Bears on the ice for charity. And Red Army losing Astana for the first time since October 2009. We're in Tolyana now, where Admiral visits Lada. No scoring in the first on this one either, so we get up from the second. Early in the period, Mikhail Fisyakov gets on a breakaway and scores his third of the year. 1-0 Admiral. After through the period, Lada tie it up. Denis Buryanov nests his fourth to make it 1-1. Buryanov should have been playing with Team Russia at the World Juniors these days in Finland, but he was cut from the team two days before the tournament. Three minutes after that, Admiral pull ahead again. Victor Alexander drops the puck for David Booth. He tries to give it back to him, but the puck goes in a flooded defenseman instead. Booth is credited with his force of the season, continues to produce a point per game, and Admiral only 2-1 after 40. Third period now, and Admiral strike again. Konstantin Makarov makes it 3-1 just two minutes into the period with a nice clapper from the left wing. Late in regulation, Admiral scored two more goals to seal the deal. Artem Pochindalov has his tenth of the year of a quick counter-attack to make it 4-1. And just 24 seconds later, Alexander Gorshkov puts a cherry on top. Dmitry Ulgin steals the puck, Mikhail Fisenko feeds Gorshkov and he nets his ninth. Great forechecking by Admiral and a much better win. Admiral wins their fifth game out of the past six as they take this one 5-1. This is Yaroslav and tonight Lokomotiv face Metalog Novokuznetsk. Kuzny may be dead last in the league in the standings, but they get on the board first on this one. Mikhail Plotnikov scores his first of the season just over three minutes into the game and Kuzny take a 1-0 lead. 
Nine minutes later, Locomotive tied up. Danila Palka scores his 13th of the year as he buries the rebound on a power play. Stefan Cuomo and Patrick Antio pick up the assists. 1-1 after 20 minutes of play. Halfway through the second period now and Kuzni get their lead back. But Dimitrikov buries a pass Vitaly Kolesnik for his third of the year and it's 2-1 Kuzni now. With just a couple of seconds left in the period, Locomotive bring it all back to even again. Dmitry Maltev takes the shot, it goes wide and Andre Luktyonov puts it home. Luktyonov does his fifth and we tie the twos up to 40. Third period now and here comes the game-winning goal. Patrick Kontiola skates to the slot from the left wing and puts it past Vladislav Podjepalski. Kontiola is his sixth of the season and second point of the night to leave Lokomotiv over Kuzna 3-2. Let's head down south now where Sochi held Sibir. Early in the first, Sibir shoot themselves in the foot as they get two minor penalties in a row. Sochi go on a 5-3 on power play, Andre Patterson takes a shot off the post, it slides over to Ziad Pagan, he gives it back to Patterson and that's easy money for him. Fantastic play by Pagan and it's 1-0 Sochi now. Four minutes later, Sibir tie it up. Captain Alexei Kopeikin feeds Viktor Bobrov at the hash marks, he shoots, the puck lands behind Konstantin Borulin and Vladimir Patuzov taps it home. Unlucky bounce for Barulans, and it's a tie game, it's 1-1. A little later, it's Pagin again. Andre Patterson sets him up for a point shot, and Pagin drives it home. Another power play marker for Sochi, and the lead 2-1 up to 20. Early in the second now, 4-4 four four hockey, and Sibir bring it all back to even again. Maxim Ignatovich puts the puck on net from the point, and that goes in. Ignatovich, who won gold medal with Team Russia at the 2011 World Juniors, scores his third of the season, and we tie the twos. We skip ahead to the third period, dying seconds of regulation. Ilya Kukunov has the puck, he skates to the slot, takes a shot, and it's in. Ilya Kukunov scores with just five seconds left on the clock, and that's our game winner in this one. So to get three points on home ice, three twos you find on this one. And just one more score to tell you about, Stepan Zahartchuk scored his fourth of the season late in the first and that proved to be enough for Agar to beat Amor. Stanislav Galimov scored 24 shots for his fifth shutout of the season, his first with Agbars and Kazan won at 1-0. And that's it for your KHL update. We'll be back tomorrow with three more games to wrap up KHL action in 2015. Make sure to tune in for that. Until next time, my name is Andreas Sachinka, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.